Hi folks, okay, what I want to take you through real quick here is how to build the little uh, electrostatic striker plates that are the, or the induction plates that you're going to put on your Wimshurst. What I have here is the aluminum no trespassing sign right here, you can see. This is what we're actually going to make these striker plates out of. I've taken a piece of craft paper and uh, marked out a template out of it, something that I can use over and over again. And you can see here I've already got four of them drawn on this thing, so I start at one edge and just start drawing them with their lines actually directly connecting to each other. That way I only have to make one cut down this line to make the cut for both pieces. And you'd set this on there uh, just like this. Once again, line up the bottom edge here right to the aluminum nice and square. And there you go. Hold that down. And just draw a line around it. And there you go. And that's all you're going to do to make your little induction plates out of the aluminum or copper or whatever you've got uh, for this Windsor's generator. Something really simple. And just take your tin snips or whatever you have here and just cut those out real easily. You don't want to bend them up too much, crinkle the edges. So you want to be real careful when you cut these out. You don't want them folded. And if you do get a bunch of bent ones, what I've done to straighten them out is sandwiched all the 32 of them for one disc all together. Make sure all the edges are directly meeting to each other and even all the way across. And I've set that between two boards and a vise. And just crank that vise down really hard. I added a little bit of heat underneath there with the torch. And then cranked it down again and let it sit overnight. And when I opened it back up the next morning, all the plates were nice and straightened out. Uh, so if you have any bends in them, that's a way to kind of straighten out your plates. Uh, so let me go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, folks, we've got both of our discs now all completed. We've got all of our uh, little laminates all glued on there and ready to go. Uh, as you can see, it spins pretty well on the wooden dowel I have in there right now. We don't have any of the center pulleys glued on them yet. I just wanted to see how well this turned out, making sure that it's nice and level inside of there. Uh, it looks good. And one way you can level these out, let me go over to the other side here and show you, is that I draw a line. As you can see right here, I draw a line all the way down the entire piece of wood down to the bottom. And then I'll actually measure in from the sides, uh, make sure that I've got my depth from the bottom to where my holes are going to be on both sides of this wood. You'll notice there's also a line over here. That allows me, and I never drill all the way through. I drill about halfway through on this side. And because I've got an exact mark over on this side, I start over there and I drill from there uh, through the rest of the other half. And that's just in case I have a little pitch to my drill while I'm doing this, my rod ends up as straight as possible. At least the input and the output holes are the same. You might get a little distortion in the very center of the wood, which is not as crucial. And you can see we have these two uh, plastic pulleys already sitting there, ready to go to make sure the distance was going to be correct. I've got one of the brass rods going all the way through the two pieces of wood here. We've just got a, a simple frame built for now. We're going to add on to this frame as it gets going to make sure that it's going to work a lot better. Uh, so one of the things here that you can see is if I spin those discs by each other, just one of them, you'll be able to see the other side there and the paint still on it from the uh, no trespassing sign. So there we go. They seem to spin pretty well. I'm going to go ahead now. Now that we've got it kind of rough set, I'm going to start gluing and attaching our pulleys here to the center of this. Uh, this should be able to turn here in just a moment once I get the lower and the upper done. Then we got to go to work on the brushes uh, and the pickups and all the rest of the combs and I'll show you that once we get to it. Alright folks, so here's what we've done now. I've put a little lock on the drive rod here. You can see a little lock nut put on there, uh, bushing, and I've glued on our pulley wheels now to both. And I've sanded with some sandpaper the plexiglass and the other face of this pulley wheel before putting the glue on there to make sure there was a nice bond. That's why you see it kind of uh, milky colored right there. That's the sanding. Uh, you'll see here if I go over the top, you'll see the other pulley wheels back there and glued to the first disc. And I actually have the drive rod right now with the little uh, bushing on there. It's actually being used as a clamp, keeping pressure between them while the glue dries and sets. Uh, next up here, what we're going to start working on are our brushes. This will be uh, made out of two stainless steel rods, which you see right here. I took that from, as you can see, this is a barbecue grill, stainless steel barbecue grill or oven grill or something like that. 
Uh, that's all you're going to need. Any steel will work. Let me get that out of the way here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use these rods right across the center here. And maybe you can see just how far we got some shadowing here. Uh, how far those are going to stretch all the way across. So there you go. Those are actually going to put our brushes right, let's see, about right there. And then we're also going to have our, uh, our pickups right here on the sides. And so our combs will actually sit right there. And I'll start working on those in a moment and show them to you. All right, folks, we're working on the lower drive pulleys now. And as you can tell, I've got this ready to rock and roll. Just turn the outside and it rotates on the inside. And all I've done is drilled an 832nd hole and put an 832nd screw inside of that hole as a set screw against the brass drive rod. And I've done the same to the other side, as you can tell right there. Uh, so we've got our both of our set screws ready to go. It's actually linked to the brass rod. I've set the brass rod in a vise and basically gave myself a Z design here. Uh, that gives you a nice easy handle. I can actually put a little outer plastic case writing on this or a metal case so it actually spins a little freer in your hand. Uh, with some little uh, grommets here on the ends. Uh, we can actually stop this from riding anywhere. We'll throw another one over here just right off the end of that. And this will give us a nice centering capability. We can adjust the pulleys anywhere we want them in between that. I won't put that on until after I've gotten the belt completed, and I'll show you that next. All right, folks. We're working on our discharge rod, and you can see I've got one completed right here. And all this is is a brass rod. I can show you here. It's a brass rod. I folded over the end around a bolt, the right size bolt that I was going to use to actually mount this off the capacitor. And this is just a brass ball at the end that I've soldered into place. And I just flipped it upside down, stuck it in the vise, so that way the solder ran down inside the threads of the ball. Put the rod in there, heated it up with a torch. You can see the solder here, and I've got the torch there. I'm going to go ahead and put together the second one. I just wanted to show you that. That's all it is, really simple. This one here is just the main rod, the long extended piece of brass rod, and I quickly just set that ball on the end of it. It's got a threaded hole. And so you just drop that right down on the end of your rod. It's really easy and then throw uh, some solder inside of there and bend them to the length you're going to want. Uh, so you're going to actually, when you build your capacitors, and the distance of this whole system is going to depend on how long you're going to want your rod. But you got to make sure you get a nice dome surface. If you see any unevenness up here, a little tip right at the top or something, you're going to want to sand that down and make sure it's nice and even. Any of the bumps at the back side when you're done soldering it here at the tip of my finger, you're going to want to go ahead and sand those down also. Make sure it's nice and smooth everywhere on your discharge rod tips. So let me go ahead and start making our combs and I'll show you that.